Hello everyone. Um, I want to talk to you about a variety of things, um, which is why I broke it up into a bunch of uh, videos. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is composite functions, which is very much linked to what we ultimately would like to learn about exponential and natural log functions. So what I've given you um, on the first page of notes is two functions and I would like to see them as composites of each other. So what do I mean by that? Okay, what would happen if I plug g of x into f of x? So f of g of x, like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay attention to this outside function, which says f, and I'll go back up here and notice we have f of x equals 3x minus 2. All right, so if I'm trying to make a substitution into this particular function, then I need to plug g of x in for the x. Right, so g of x would go in here. It would be 3 times whatever my g of x is, and then I subtract 2. So 3 times something minus 2. Again, g of x is being substituted in for the x. So in here I go up here for g of x and I get x plus 2 divided by 3. Alright, let's simplify this. As you can see, the 3's cancel here, so that leaves me with x plus 2 minus 2. Notice now the 2's cancel, which leaves me with x. Now that's kind of convenient. You notice I put f of g of x and at the end of all of this I'm only left with the x. The f and the g cancel each other out. Okay so let's go the opposite direction. Maybe that was a fluke. So let's do g of f of x. Like that. Okay so I'm going to pay attention to the g and come back here. So g of x equals x plus 2 all divided by 3. So I have a substitution to make, so my f of x will go in for every x, so it has to go here. So I get something plus 2 all over 3. So what's that something? I go right here, it's f of x. So there's my f of x, I'll plug that in. 3x minus 2. Okay, here you'll notice the 2's cancel first, so I get 3x divided by 3, and what am I left with? x. Now the beautiful thing about these composite functions, and let me write down what I'm saying, composite, C-O-M-P-O-S-I-T-E, right? A composite function is when you have a function within another function, in essence. Um, the beautiful thing about uh, these composite functions is when F acts on G, you're only left with the variable, right? So the F and the G unravel each other here. Notice the same thing happens here. When g acts on f, which is acting on your variable, you're only left with your variable. So when this occurs, when you can go both ways, they are called inverse functions of each other. Right, they unravel each other. Now a rather convenient way of determining whether two functions are inverse of each other is by graphing them. Okay, and this is often a faster way of determining whether you're looking at inverse functions. So let me just show you how that would work. I'll just plug it in. So for my y1, I'll just plug in what the f of x was. 3x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to sketch that out. Alright, so keep in mind that that's the f of x one. Okay, so let's go in here. Y equals for my second Y. I'm going to put parentheses around my numerator because I want to make sure that um, it divide all of it is divided by 3. So parentheses, X plus 2, all of that divided by 3. And let's scrap that as well. Okay. Now the last function that I'm going to graph is this variable that we get at the very end, right? Y equals X. Because notice when f acts on g, acts on x, we get x. When g acts on f, acts on x, we get x. So the last thing that I'm going to plug into my calculator is y equals x. 
Now there's a reason I'm doing this and I'll show you in a minute. Graph this. Okay, so the beautiful thing about inverse functions is if I were to fold my calculator right on this line right here, y equals x, one of them would fall on top of the other. Notice this one was f of x right there. And this one is g of x. And you'll notice that they collapse on each other if I make the fold right here. Right, so if I could pick my calculator up and fold right on this line, this piece would match up with that, and this piece would match up with that. So that's what I mean by you being able to determine whether two functions are inverse of each other because one should fold on top of the other about y equals x. Now you notice in your notes, I gave this to you at the bottom of page one so that you could make the fold yourself and see that 3x minus 2 folds right on top of x plus 2 divided by 3. So that is a very fast way of doing it. So let me sketch those out and show you what I mean by making that fold. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm as clear as is possibly possible. So here we have x and y. Okay, this is going to be a bad sketch because I'm not able to do it as accurately as the calculator can. So there's that one where we have f of x equals 3x minus 2. Make sure you're labeling everything so it's clear what you're trying to communicate. And then here's the other one. Okay, so this one goes with that. And this one we can label as g of x equals x plus 2 divided by 3. So that's that one. And then the last thing that I want to sketch in is this. Okay, I'm going to put it as a dashed line because that's going to be my fold. Right? I want it to stand out from the rest of it. Okay, so this last one, why not label that as y equals x. Right? That's what happened when f acts on g, which acts on x. So if I were to take my paper, and again, I'm not going to be able to do this very well because I'm not your calculator. I'm not nearly as accurate as your calculator is. If I were to fold right on this dotted line, hopefully you can see that the two functions collapse right on top of each other. Right? At that bottom part, look down here at the, at the bottom part, you can see one collapses on top of the other. And the same thing for this. Right? It's a very fast way of identifying that two functions are inverse of each other. Now, you can do the math and find out whether f acting on g will give you your variable or g acting on f will give you your variable but if you do if you look at it visually it's just as legitimate okay so i wanted to show you guys um two functions and then see if we can draw a conclusion as to whether these two functions are inverse of each other okay so in your calculator we want to plug in f of x equals e the x. All right, so here's my calculator. Let me clear out these three. And second, the natural log button, pull up e the x. And graph it. Okay, by the way, this is also sketched out in your notes. So let me go over here. There we go, there's that one. Okay, the other function that I want to sketch out is y equals the natural log of x, ln of x, like that. Let's graph that one as well. Okay, so, so this one is g of x equals the natural log of x. Okay, so if you remember, my purpose is to decide whether these two are inverse functions of each other. So I'm going back to my calculator, and the last function that I'll plug in is y equals x. See if I can make that fold. All right. Okay, so of course I'm going to do a poor job of uh, drawing the line because I'm not as accurate as the, the calculator is. But hopefully you can see that if I pick my paper up 
if I pick up my calculator, I will be folding my calculator right on that line. But if I pick my paper up and I fold right on this line, F and G lie right on top of each other. All right, so hopefully you can see that, see? All right, even with my bad sketch, you can say, oh yeah, those two are mirror images of each other about Y equals X. So the question, what does that mean? That means that we should be able to write it with the composite function and the two functions should cancel each other out and give you your variables. I talk about this more in a later video, but okay, so let's write this as a composite function. So if f of x equals e of the x and g of x equals the natural log of x. We already proved their inverse functions. This is our proof right here, right? We made the fold around y equals x, one lies on top of the other. So that means that if we take f of g of x, that end result is x. And if we take g of f of x, that end result is x. So now it's just a matter of doing it. Okay, so f of g of x, let's pay attention to the f. So we gotta go back up here. So then this is f of x equals e the x. So the substitution is g forces out the x, has to go right there. So this equals e to the whatever g of x was, right there, natural log of x. Okay, so this is an important relationship. I come back to this, I'll come back to it in a later video. This is an important relationship. And here's the next one that we have to consider. Let me separate this. Oops, sorry about that. I meant to pick this up here. Uh, when those two act on each other, you just get your variable. Okay, here, I need my outside function is g, so g of x. This one is the one that I wanna write down, right? So this equals the natural log of x. So the substitution is f is going to force out the x position has to go right there. So this equals the natural log of f of x. And if you'll notice right here, f of x is e to the x power. So this also is an important relationship. Okay, I'll come back to this in a later video.